morning, 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 everybody. How you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I'm Sean Butler. Bugsy's up in front. It's super windy here today, so apologies if uh, the popping on the audio is outrageous. I'll do my best to edit it out, but I don't have my mic with me that can block all that stuff out. So, sorry in advance. How are you? We hope you're happy and healthy doing the things you love. Please do me a favor, guys. Smash the like button for me like you always do on the video. Hit the subscribe. If you haven't already on the channel, join the now 11,000 and near 900 Tottenham fans that have gone before. Welcome back to them. Welcome to you. Hit the notification bell and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's video and straight out of the gate. I have to be honest, I apologize because we're gonna be introducing for some of these transfer rumors, a shameless scale out of five shameless emojis based on how shameless I am to put it out there. And then also out of five fishing rods, how much of a clickbait <laughs> is it from the journalist who wrote it? And I think on today's one, we're gonna give it, I think four out of fives on both the shameless and the clickbait scale. I can only apologize, but we are a Tottenham fan channel. We're not a journalist. So if it's in the news and it's interesting, then we shall report it. And whilst I think the story itself doesn't hold much water, I think if there happens to be any truth to it, when it does tell its own tale, and I think we can elaborate a little bit and go into some kind of theories and hypotheses around you know, what the go is. Here's the story. Transfer in Siaga, some Portuguese, um, fairly well followed Twitter handle. I'm not sure if they're part of a larger media outlet. Put out the story this morning in Portuguese that was kindly translated and retweeted by Last Word on Spurs, that Tottenham have opened talks with George Mendes, the super agent, around the possibility of signing Gonzalo Ramos to Tottenham Hotspur. You might know Ramos from last season's exceptional performance fame. 27 goals for Benfica, 12 assists. The guy's 22 years old. Before we get into the details, a bit of a profile on the player as I see him. His strengths are obviously his finishing. He's very cool and calm and composed. A very clever player who can score with both feet. He can lead the line as a number nine all by himself. He's more than capable of doing it. He's strong. He also can drop deep and connect the play. He does very nice, tricky, intricate footwork and, and one, two touch passes, that sort of stuff with the players around him in the front line for Benfica. And... Look, he's a player that has got the world at his feet and a massive, massive future ahead of him. His weaknesses, in my opinion, are his pace or lack thereof. I don't think he's particularly fast. I would also say that his first touch can be a little bit sloppy. I think he had about a similar amount of missed controls per 90 last season as players like Richarlison, like nearly, nearly three, 2.8 or something, missed controls per 90. So... Areas for improvement, right? And like I say, whilst he's not slow, he certainly certainly isn't um, the sharpest. But I do think he's the, the best part about, game, about his game and why he would suit a lot of the clubs that are potential suitors for him is his work rate. He's an incredibly effective presser of the ball and he goes after it and charges down opposition players when he's playing in the solo nine role or when he's mixing it up with the other players around him. Um, yeah, in terms of teamwork and effort, the guy has it in spades. So, obviously, you think automatically that's a wonderful fit for a Postacoglu system. It's also a wonderful fit for systems like Manchester United's. And for what it's worth, Eric Ten Hag, only a couple of days ago, there was loads of reports that Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag are prioritising trying to get him over the line to join them instead. We'll talk about the feasibility in just a second, but the last bit I want to talk about is the release clause. Mendes says there's a 120 million euro release clause for him, which is about 102, 103 million pound. But apparently, according to this transfer Enciaga thing, um, Benfica would probably deal at around 80 million. I'm not sure if that was euros or pounds. I would imagine pounds um, should the right offer come in. Now, where is the right offer? And this is really where I want to go with it. You know, obviously, from a Tottenham's perspective, I don't think there's any feasibility in it for what it's worth, but let's just go with the idea that it, that it is feasible. 
then it's only feasible if Harry Kane leaves, right? And we know that Harry Kane has interests from Bayern Munich, from Paris Saint-Germain, from Manchester United, from Chelsea, and basically from any club that would like to have a number nine if they could afford him and if they could attract him. That obviously tells you one tale, that he is the most desirable number nine out there in world football right now. But it also tells you how many other clubs are looking for strikers. I mean, Chelsea have just signed Nico Jackson on a release fee, which I thought was brilliant value, but they are still out there looking for another number nine to give competition for. So I think if there are number nines available, there's a long, long line of suitors from the big names, the big clubs in world football that want these players. We've seen rumours today that Osterman is attracting interest to Real Madrid, who are obviously looking for someone else in the future to replace their man that's, that's going to be um, kind of retiring soon or maybe moving to, Real, uh, to, to, um, to Saudi Arabia. And so I think that when you look at the list of other players that are out there, players like Dusan Vlaevic, players might maybe like Ramos. You know, I, I just I wonder whether or not, and obviously you throw Osman in there as well, even if Tottenham did have 100 million to spend, whether or not they are ever going to be able to attract a player when there's other teams out there that are also looking to attract these players that also have money to spend and that can compete on everything that Tottenham can compete with them on. You know, when it comes to salaries, when it comes to... Um, the attractiveness of playing in the city or in the for the club itself, playing for trophies, playing in Europe, everything that Tottenham can offer, everybody else can too. And so, you know, it's just it tells you a little story, I think, about how how difficult it's going to be for Tottenham to move on from Harry Kane when that day comes, whether it's this summer or next summer or in three or four years' time. Obviously, in three or four years' time, it's going to be a whole different world to worry about. But for me. I don't think it's possible or plausible really to, to be attracting these players because whoever doesn't get Harry Kane, if Harry Kane leaves and he goes to Bayern Munich, then you know that United and and Paris and Real Madrid will be going after the likes of Osimhen, the likes of Vlaevic and stuff. And so I think Tottenham will have to kind of probably anticipate lowering the standards a little bit, lowering the expectations and going a different direction. That's also why I think it's so important, if possible, to kick the can of Harry Kane down the road in an ideal world, you get him to sign a new contract. Or you go out there and you make sure that you have a plan B in place should you finally come to the terms of getting the Bayern Munich deal done. You want that deal done as soon as possible, but you also want to be having your alternative, your backup, your, your replacement in place before the world knows that you have that 100 million pound or the 100 million euros or whatever it is that we're going to sell Harry Kane for. And to me, that's the last thing I want to say on this story is... There's been a lot of links recently now with Tottenham going after these players. Now, I don't know what the um, whether the stories are based in reality or whether they're based in just people putting two and two together and thinking, here's a story we can make up because of the Harry Kane thing. However, what I would say is there are rumours that the reason why Wolfsburg are playing hard to get or difficult with the pricing now with Harry Kane is because they have been led to believe by the German side of the press that that the Harry Kane money is going to be there soon. And so maybe are we to infer from this, from these sorts of stories, that maybe Harry Kane to Bayern Munich is closer than we think and that it's something that we should just kind of prepare ourselves for and get it done. Me personally, I want the story to be over as quick as possible, one way or the other. If he wants to leave, I want him to go. I want us to have the money, the right money, and get it done. But I also want the alternatives and the replacements ready to go and signed, sealed, and delivered. And we've spoken ad nauseum about who that is. Personally, I wouldn't be too too bothered if Tottenham had to go down a level. There's plenty of players out there that are 22, 23 years old that aren't playing at the highest level yet, but will be in a few years' time. Or maybe Tottenham can look to one of those places, whether that's going to placate or satiate the demands of Tottenham fans who will look for someone else to come in and, and do what Harry Kane did. I'm not entirely convinced, but I just worry a little bit whether the reason why these rumours are here is not because it's the cart before the horse where people are saying, well, let's assume that Harry Kane's going. What can we make up to, to substantiate stories? But I, and I'm, I would hope that that's probably the way it is, but just on the off chance that it's the other way around and that, that actually there are truths to the fact that Tottenham are talking to George Mendes about Ramos then does that tell us something that we aren't really aware of yet? And that is that potentially the German media are actually correct when they tell their side of the story and that Harry Kane really does want to leave and he really has made those intentions clear to Tottenham that this summer 
is his last at Tottenham and that he wants to go to Bayern, wants to win trophies and that Tottenham need to prepare right now for life after Harry Kane. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Sorry if you think this is clickbait, but I wanted to use it as a way to go in there and discuss about other things. Like, subscribe and comment. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.